I wrote to Sean Great asking for an on-camera interview. He replied with much more than a yes or no, providing insight into the mind of a confessed killer and why he says the government killed his victims first. They were already dead. Sean Great wrote to me in one of two letters dated September 28th, written in careful cursive on ruled loose leaf paper, apologizing for sloppiness because he had to write with a small pencil. In his first letter, Great tells me about facing himself in the mirror and promises to share exactly why he did it. And that's exactly what he did in the second letter, which I found folded neatly inside the original signed copy of his indictment, the same document that lists his aggravated murder charges in the death of Stacey Stanley and Elizabeth Griffith. The charges came after a third woman who escaped led police to their bodies in this Ashland home last month. They were already dead, just their bodies were flopping wherever they can flop, but their minds were dead, Great wrote blaming government assistance for taking the minds of his victims. And so he finished the job with what he calls a horrible act of violent behavior. And he says this story began five years ago when he first reached out for government assistance. But he said he couldn't get enough, writing that he received $197 a month on a food card, though many bodies receive 700 he wrote. Great uses the words bodies, victims, and people interchangeably. And the letter is scattered with Bible verses about death. We're sharing these letters because we believe what Great says is news. He admits to his roles in the death of five women, but even more, these letters shed light on what he claims to be his motive. And Great acknowledges that those families have the right to know why he did it. And he also confesses his fears that he will become dead-minded like them, stuck in a cell for the rest of his life. Posing a final question, scrawled across the top of the letterhead, why is my mind eating me alive or has it ate me? I called the Ashland County Prosecutor's Office to let them know about the letters and their contents, but I couldn't get through to the prosecutor. Support staff told me the office doesn't want them and doesn't care what I do with them. Then I received an email from the special prosecutor in the case telling me I could submit copies of the letters if I want to. I'll be taking those responses to legal experts to get their input. In the studio, Megan Hickey, News 5.